Coming up on South Coast Spotlight, a local organization uses art to tell a healing story. Go beyond the red carpet to see how the Santa Barbara International Film Festival gives back to the community. And local students dream up an opera on the go. Hi everyone, this is South Coast Spotlight. I'm Matt Schuster. And I'm Dominique Samario. The South Coast definitely loves its arts. Recently, we had the chance to attend a number of events that showcase how the arts community is giving back some of that love. Up first, a local organization gets creative to raise awareness for child abuse. is the one organization in this community that is completely dedicated to the prevention and treatment of child abuse. We've been here for 42 years, started because one woman uh, wanted to make a difference in the life of a child. She started with a very simple idea, a phone in her house, an ad in the paper which said, stress parents call this number. From there we grew from somebody's kitchen into an organization that serves the entire county. Art therapy is a modality of psychotherapy that is particularly useful for people who have been traumatized because often uh, trauma is stored as images in the brain and the way that we process trauma is from the ground up, meaning we process trauma through the, the reptilian part of our brain, the brain stem, where fight or flight happens. And then the last thing that gets processed is logic, which is in the front part of the brain. It looks kind of streaky. Last April, which is Child Abuse Prevention Month, we started our I Will Not Be Silent campaign. I will not be silent about child abuse. We begged the community to join with us in speaking up for children, reporting abuse, noticing and supporting families, reaching out to others in the community that have children and supporting those families. What we're doing is we're having kids come into a room who may have been threatened or misled with words by their abusers and we're instead of asking them to tell us personal details to help them heal, we're having them do something that feels good and is in children's natural language which is to paint or draw a little bit about themselves and eventually what happened to them so that they can process with more logic and more reasoning in the front of the brain. And we're going to start with our brain background. This event, which features art and healing through art, um, is part, one, one of the ways that we help children to express themselves when they have been abused or hurt, neglected. They feel bad about who they are. Um, they're not good at anything. And they, they need a way to express themselves. And that's how we use art to, as, a, as a medium of expression for children who have been abused. Some of the art on the tables is by Calm clients. Some of the art is from VADA students at the Visual Arts Academy. But the art that's for sale is from people in the community, artists in the community, who decided to help our cause, donate a piece for auction um, to help the art therapy program at Calm. And the theme is healing. So everybody donated a piece um, about healing through art. And it's a lovely collection. There are many people to thank here we are right on the ocean's edge and it's a beautiful day here and we all think about about our Santa Barbara as paradise and it is um, but it's not paradise for everyone there are children suffering there are children and families that are uh, on the fringes when you see such a beautiful day and we're, we're all having such a beautiful day and not everybody realizes that not everybody's having a beautiful day and they want to help kids they want to help any way that they can. Another thing that we are hoping to achieve today is to ask people to join with us. There are so many ways to get involved. Yes, people can donate to our organization because the grants that we receive are never sufficient to cover everything that we do. People that just want to get our newsletter, they can go to our website and you know give us their name, sign the pledge, and they'll begin to get a monthly newsletter that, that tells everything that we're, that's going on in our organization. When most 
most people think of film festivals, they think of red carpets, big name stars, and of course, movies. But for the Santa Barbara International Film Festival, it also means giving back to the community. TVSV was at a variety of star-studded events that highlighted not only films, but also showcased Santa Barbara's spirit. In 1912, before Hollywood had been completely established, Santa Barbara was home to the most productive movie studio in the world. Over 100 years later, the power of filmmaking and our community's love of cinema can be seen each year at the Santa Barbara International Film Festival. Join us as South Coast Spotlight takes you beyond the red carpet and behind the scenes of some of the festival's unique programs that inspire our community. <laughs> Part of the film festival, hundreds gathered at Sullivan Goss Gallery, not to watch the next blockbuster, but to support an award which highlights filmmakers on a mission to make our world a better place. The Social Justice Award was established in the year 2000. The goal is to honor, recognize, promote films that deal with critical social, economic, and environmental issues. For the Santa Barbara community, um, I've not been a long-time member, but in my short time here, um, I've learned how many people are really invested in um, philanthropy. There's really nothing that can match film in moving people to action on these issues. To bring visibility to causes. I'm really proud to be in a place where people of so much privilege work really hard to uh, to give back. We have 10 nominees, which is our, our maximum. Uh, so we look at more films than that, but ultimately the film festival accepts the films, and then we choose among those documentaries to find the films that deal with the range of issues that we're, we're interested in and dealing with. And of course the fund does the same work. So we're a funder and supporter and trainer for community organizing work. I am hoping that we become a place that's known for supporting social justice issue documentary film. One of these documentary films to inspire change was made by two friends from Canada who set out on an epic journey to a faraway place. Documenting the much needed medical support in the region aims to inspire not only viewers, but impacted the filmmakers as well. On a philanthropic journey to Tibet, uh, one doctor, very high-ranking, high-contributing physician, gains more than he could ever imagine. I'm a physician, a family doctor in Canada, and when I was when I was training um, in Vancouver, I was training under Isaac Sobel, who is the uh, sort of the you know the subject of the film. And Isaac took me to Tibet uh, with him uh, for one of my uh, electives for a month. It was a life-changing experience for me. He goes to Tibet every year. I go with him on his 10th and final year to Tibet and he sets up a clinic and treats thousands of people and I went and shot that experience. Four thousand screaming school children from across the South Coast isn't an everyday sight, but for one special Santa Barbara International Film Festival program, not only do they come together, they come together to learn. He started off 10 years ago, I was there to guide the volunteers, and little did I know that I was going to see this amazing program evolve to what it is today. We drove all the way down from Morro Bay to come to this. When we got the opportunity to go, I was really excited. The film festival's field trip to the movies has grown into one of its most unique and inspiring programs. At first glance, inviting local 5th and 6th graders to the Arlington Theater to watch a blockbuster film free of charge might sound like a fun excuse to get students out of class. But its mission is much more. Started by local filmmaker Mike Degree, the event uses filmmaking to stimulate creative thinkers and empower students and teachers. The people that are helping us sponsor this program will get a good feel for what, it, you know, the enthusiasm and the love that's being involved. It's so, so great that all of you guys took the message of the movie about your center and applied it to yourselves. That was really, really special. Like I said, all of these and every single picture back there is incredible. You guys are so talented and so wonderful. I just hope you never stop. Without local filmmaker Mike Degree, Field Trip to the Movies wouldn't be possible. Although incredibly successful in his own right, he once told me that it was sharing his passion for film with the children in our community that was one of the most special things he'd ever done. You want to balance, you know, the technology with the act, uh, that the kids are into this, these days in school with actual real-world applic applications rather than 
you know, just playing games all the time so they can come down, see something like this, see that, that these kind of skills can be applied throughout their life. We have the director that um, will have a Q&A with the kids afterwards and we've asked the kids to write the questions ahead of time because we're so big right now we can't have 4,000 kids raising their hands. It's pretty lucky for us to do it. Sort of, yeah, bridge the gap from just going to the theater to actually the production of the film. And I would like to think that one day one of these kids is going to be the, the next James Cameron or Mike Degree. We're hoping that our enthusiasm and our love for what we're doing will be inflicted on a child and then they'll be coming to the film festival, bringing their film and being part of field trips to the movies. Well, kids, let's, let's say thanks to Peter. Thank you. Thank you, guys. This is great. To me, it's all about Mike and his spirit and it lives on. And he was so infectious and look what he's created you know and for me it's just living on with my spirit 4,000 screaming school children pay tribute to one of our community's beloved fallen heroes for years now Hollywood's A-listers have been making a pre-Oscar pilgrimage to Santa Barbara to explain their craft before the Academy Awards. South Coast Spotlight was on the scene to hear about their hopes, share in their happiness, and join in on their red carpet experience. I just finished a movie with Ben Stiller called The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. It's the best movie I've ever been in and he's a fantastic director. I was born in Brenton, Canada and now I live in Los Angeles. And it is freezing and I don't mind this weather because I know people there who are, I cannot complain to, they would be murderous of me. They do dramas that take place in, that take place in contentious places where bad things happen, but it's, they, they're all again as dramas. I love Santa Barbara, and you know what, this film festival is one of the best film festivals on planet Earth. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's great, I mean, this is our, U, I mean, this is our U.S. premiere. So it's a big deal for us, for a little Canadian movie that uh, has, has beaten the odds and you know we've sold it and it's going to open all over the country and we're thrilled. I saw a film by Stanley Kubrick, Dr. Strangelove, and then I decided that uh, that's what I wanted to do and I went to graduate school in film in London for two years. We're, we're fueled by a certain obligation internally, like I have to do this, this is all I want to do with my life, so there's no other options. So I think if that's the way that you feel about it, then they should pursue it. But it's a tough life. It's a hard road, that's for sure. Every film star has to start somewhere, and the best place to catch a glimpse of the next big name bill might just be right here at the 101010 10 competition. I had to get all the actors, um, I had to make the script basically into a movie. They had an announcement in class that submissions were going, and I had a script that could work. It was pretty crazy. Um, it was stressful, but I learned a lot, and I met a lot of cool people, and the mentors were all really cool. It's been amazing. Just look behind me. Everybody turns out for this. They, they love it. People donate their businesses, open it up for filming. I didn't really understand how big it was until we met with the like the directors at the school was like, this is a really big thing, just so you know. So we choose five high school and five college. Prior to their films, uh, there are 10 screenwriters that are also chosen. And they write the scripts for three months, and then it gets turned into a film. Welcome to the 10th anniversary of the 10 10 competition. Luckily, I had some good people that were willing to help out. I luckily got paired up with an actual fellow classmate of mine, randomly, when they picked it out of the hat. It's very important to give back to education programs. We would, a lot of these kids have come back and said it's changed their career path. They're, they're in high school, they didn't know where they wanted to go in college, what they wanted to do, and now they want to be a screenwriter. You can't do it by yourself, so you need a lot of people to help out, but it was, it was worth it. You know, obviously, as a writer, you wish some things made into the film and some things don't. I love it. Um, it was really it looks it looks amazing. A lot of festivals have their programs, but nothing like this. Um, you got 10 days to create a film, and that's editing, that's sound, that's the actors, that's getting everything done in 10 days, and they pull it together, and it's amazing. So enjoy the films, and I will see you after. Thank you.
you think of an opera, you usually don't think of cheeseburgers and samurai swords. But for these local elementary school students, opera can mean anything they dream up, thanks to Opera Santa Barbara's Opera Lab. There's a name for this example of musical conversation in opera, and it's called recitative. Recitative in opera is where you have a musical conversation that's completely sung. So we're going to give you an example of recitative. What is your favorite fast food restaurant? Yes. In and Out Burger. Love it. Okay, so I'm going to In and Out Burger, and Queen Princess is going to be the cashier, and I am reminding my character again. Diego is going to order some food. Be a princess. Okay, you ready? Here we go. I'm very hungry. Hello, Diego. What can my daughters get for you? Well, before I destroy the world, I need a very good snack. I think I'll have a double double animal style. Of course you will. And a fry. Animal style as well. Aren't you going to ask me if I'm thirsty? No. <laughs> well, I'm thirsty. Well, deal with it. And I want a shake, a strawberry shake. Fine. And that's exactly what we're going to do with your very own opera in just a minute. We'll pick characters, we'll write a story, and then using arias, duets, trios, quartets, we'd use a quintet if we had a good singer, and recitative, we will tell that story. We'll sing in English, but we may also sing in French, Italian, German, but it won't matter if you listen to the music and watch what we do, you'll be able to tell what's going on. So, let's take it away. Let's create an opera for you guys. We're going to pick out of this envelope the main character. Once there was a landlord in Hawaii, and every day the landlord snorkeled. Oh, I forgot about that. Uh, but one day, an assassin, an assassin followed the landlord. And because of that, the landlord bought a sword. And because of that, the assassin got a bigger sword. Until finally, the landlord became a sword swallower. And ever since that day, the landlord quit their job as a landlord and became a professional sword swallower. Landlord to sword swallower in one day.
Be sure to continue to join us on South Coast Spotlight for a look at the arts, culture, and community that make up the South Coast. If you have ideas for future segments, email us at info at tvsb.tv. Until next time, make it a great day.